Alright, so in this lesson I'm going to discuss the fact that pointers, like any other variable, have memory addresses and we're going to look into this in more detail. So up until now we have learned a lot about pointers. In the previous examples I have used a special type of 16 byte RAM in each lesson to make it easier to understand how variables are stored in memory and how pointers work. I have also showed how pointers can be used to point at variables inside memory by containing the memory address of those variables. Now we need to consider something else about pointers. Pointers have to exist somewhere inside of memory also. That means whenever you create a pointer, it is given a place in memory just like any other variable. Let's consider the following code. Only for the sake of this lesson, we need to make some assumptions. And so I'm going to write them out so that we can go over them. So first of all, we're going to assume that the data type unsigned short int is only one byte in size, just for the sake of this lesson. We are going to assume that you need one byte to store a memory address. We're going to assume that our pointer PTR is going to reside in a single byte of memory. We're going to assume that the variable height will reside at position 8 in memory like we've done up until now. And we're going to assume that the pointer PTR will reside at position 4 in memory. Now don't worry, you don't have to remember all of that. The main point that I want you to understand is that a lot of what I'm showing you is for illustrative purposes only to make things easier to understand and not all of this carries over into actual real code but don't worry you will understand what does and what doesn't. So first of all let's imagine how our memory is going to look. This is what RAM is going to look like, our 16-byte RAM. Okay, so at position 4 in RAM, we're saying that's where our pointer PTR is. Look at what is contained at this memory address. The value 8. Why? Because we are assuming that PTR contains the memory address of height. And we're assuming that height is here at position 8. So don't worry if this is confusing. Let's, let's go over it carefully one step at a time. First of all, we're creating height and giving it a value of 10. That means at the memory address for height, which we're saying is here, we have the value 10. That's all. Then we're creating a new pointer and giving that pointer the mem a value which is the memory address of height. Now that pointer has to go somewhere so we're assuming the pointer goes here at memory position 4 and we're giving the pointer the value which is the memory address of height just like we've done up until now. Now just to make this maybe a little easier to understand I'm going to take away all the bytes that we're not using. So here we're first of all we're creating the variable height we're giving it the value of 10 height has a memory address that memory address we're assuming is position 8 in RAM like we've done because it's easy to understand and we're saying at position 8 there is the value 10 and then we're saying that we're creating a pointer of the same data type remember the data type of the pointer is important in knowing how how many bytes to move when you when you change the pointer say add one to it and it's also important because when you're looking at the data that is at that memory address you need to know what you're looking at but the pointer itself any pointer no matter what data type it is a pointer contains a memory address and a memory address is just a number so we're creating a pointer 
and we're giving it a value which is the memory address of height and we're saying that that pointer is going to be here at position 4 so we're saying PTR is here in RAM at position 4 and PTR contains 1000 which is the memory address of height that's what we're saying and we're saying oops, height is here in RAM contains 10 the value of 10 so with that in mind I'll once again show you the whole thing it should make more sense now if you were confused before now notice that our pointer is really no different than any other variable it has a memory address which in this case is 4 and it has a value which in this case is 8 the value is just a number it just so happens that that value that number is the memory address of the variable height in an earlier lesson we saw that variables like height are plain English names that correspond to values that are stored at specific memory addresses for example if I type height equals 10 C will keep track of the actual memory address where height resides so that I don't have to whenever you create a pointer you are giving the pointer a plain English name the same way as you would do for a variable in general and a pointer has a memory address just like a variable does so all we are changing in this example versus what we've done so far is it used to be that I wrote something like this I would say height is here and then I would say PTR contains thousand or eight which is the value which is the memory address of height right now all I'm doing is I'm reminding you that PTR is a variable it's a pointer but it's still a variable it has to exist somewhere in RAM so we're giving it an address we're going to give it the address of 4 in RAM and we're going to say that at that address is the value um, 8 which is the address of so here that's all we're doing is we're we're clarifying that PTR is itself a variable it has a memory address and it has a value just like any other variable okay so a pointer and a variable are pretty much the same thing in this sense so let's consider the following code here we're creating a variable called height and we're giving it a value of 5 we're creating a pointer called my pointer and giving it a value which is the memory address of height now after these two lines of code we have learned that first of all if we write my pointer then we are referring to the value that is stored in my pointer and that would be a memory address in this case the memory address of height so without the star if we just write my pointer then we are referring to the memory address of height if we write star my pointer then we are referring to what is at that memory address which means we're referring to the actual bi binary sequence for the number five now a new question for you what does this mean well this means address of so this would mean the memory address where my pointer oops, is in memory so just like you can write ampersand height to mean the address of height you can say 
ampersand my pointer to mean the memory address of my pointer. Just the memory address of the pointer, not what is stored there. In our 16 byte RAM example, ampersand my pointer would refer to this, Oops. the value 4, because what we all right, make this a little, a little more clear. Let me let me paste back what that looks like so you can see it. So this is our 16-byte RAM. So since my pointer, I'll just call it PTR. There. Let's look at it like this. So ampersand PTR. What does it mean? Well. PTR is a pointer that exists in memory at position 4. It contains the value 8 because 8 is the memory address of height and so on, but we don't really care about that. All we really care about is that it has a memory address. Pointer has a memory address, which is 4. So ampersand pointer means the memory address of PTR, which in this case is going to be 4. So in summary, a pointer has to reside in memory somewhere just like any other variable. You can use the ampersand operator, which means address of, with a pointer in order to obtain the memory address where the pointer itself resides. So. If I write here I have created a pointer. If I write now I'm referring to whatever the value that is stored in that pointer which is which is presumably going to be a memory address. Like let's suppose I wrote, I created a variable called height and I gave it the value 5 and I set this to the address of height. So here my pointer is just going to refer to the memory address of height. If I write this, then I'm referring to what is at that memory address, which is going to be 5. If I write this, then I am saying the memory address where the pointer itself is. I don't know what that memory address is, but I know there has to be one because everything has to be in memory somewhere. So this pointer has a memory address. It exists in memory somewhere, and if I wanted that specific memory address, I would put an ampersand in front of the pointer name like this. We'll get into this more in detail later, but right now I just want you to understand two things. A pointer has a memory address, just like anything else. You can obtain that memory address with a ampersand address of operator. Okay, on to the next lesson.